Welcome to the War Horse Exhibition. Uh, what's, it, what's exciting for me is it's a culmination of all work done from 2007 to now, uh, which come from the original uh, play, uh, that's drawings that are projected onto 26 metre backdrop, which helps tell the story of the show in the in the live performance at the New London and also in Tokyo and Amsterdam and Berlin at the moment. Um, these original drawings are the beginnings of, this is, a, this is an explosion which then gets animated by um, 59 production and uh, this is, was the beginning of exploring uh, vorticism or uh, cubism and uh, blowing things up in the uh, First World War battle landscape. Um, and this was one image that uh, was widely used in the show. We, uh, the show was very monochrome um, on purpose really uh, and there was one moment like in a Hitchcock film where everything went red and it was when our main protagonist and his best friend was shot dead as they were going over the top on, um, uh, into battle. And uh, the image for that was the single poppy uh, with blood blowing out of it and uh, the, the poppy, the, the blood spread across the full screen of the show and uh, then turned into a field of poppies. Uh, so this was the beginning point of that image in the War Horse show. Uh, this, this drawing here is um, a cavalry charge, of course. Um, this is when uh, Nichols and Stewart are jovially racing each other on Salisbury Plain before they disembark to uh, France. Uh, this drawing was done, interestingly enough, for the uh, book, uh, the illustrated edition of War Horse, which came from the notion of Michael wanting to reprint the story he wrote in 1980 something, one, <laughs> and, um, and uh, including the idea of the, of the show in it and all the kind of visual language of it. So this was uh, one of the first drawings for the book, actually. And uh, here's another vorticist explosion. Um, what you see when you go and see the show is that these, these are animated uh, to create this kind of nightmarish Phantom of Gosma of uh, First World War battleground, um, which looms over the actors on stage. It's really quite exciting. But those animations were, you know, taken from these these drawings, really. Um, so go over here. This is the this is the uh, moment of going over the top uh, with Arth uh, with um, Albert and um, David. Uh, which shows uh, the, the story. This was this was basically for the book, um, which was different from the show because, of course, you have actors in the show. But this story is the story of individuals who are in a huge army going over the top and what kind of world they enter into and how they survive or don't. Um, it gives a kind of insider story to... Uh, the interior of a battle so it's quite dramatic and what was nice for me was to be able to do something like that because normally I would rely on the actors to do it so it's nice to be put in that position and this is a, a picture that was also done for the book of Joey speeding through no man's land and uh, part of this is um, a reference to Moybridge and uh, his sort of active landscapes really as he as he sort of passes through, this is Jerry the horse. This is a sort of romantic shot of him, and these are these are the beginning of the idea of the of uh, Moybridge, who basically experimented with movement and action um, of photography, and uh, we did so as we imagined Captain Nichols drawing the movement of Joey running across the downs, written by Albert. And this was part of an idea that we then cut, which was uh, the horse materialising out of the air. So this is why it's blue. Uh, this again was going to be an animation as uh, Joey and Albert rode across the clouds of the sky. But uh, it didn't work, so that was cut. <laughs> but this, this is an indication of the work in progress of uh, the theatre show, actually. The 
book. <laughs> and here we have um, some, again some pictures that come from the book. This is the moment after Nichols gets shot off the horse. So it's kind of action shot of uh, Joey strangely finding himself surviving in the middle of um, the shoot, battle shooting. Uh, and these are the, 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 folk, the beginning of sketching the cover of the book, uh, which is uh, Joey riding riderless um, in a panic through no man's land. Um, this is a sequestering scene as Joey being bought Captain Nichols, actually my, this is my granddad here, uh, great granddad, great granddad uh, Charles Henry White, who was in the 48th RGA, but um, that's him. Uh, but he's pretending to be Captain Nichols or Stuart at the sequestering uh, in a village, um, a Cornish village. In fact, it's also my village in Ellesmere that doesn't look too similar to this now, where I come from in Shropshire. Um, which I modelled as a rural backwater. <laughs> um, so you can walk through the exhibition and go up the stairs. I see these lovely pictures. And this one here. Uh, these are some of uh, the characters in uh, the story of War Horse. This is uh, a character we call Nasty Carl or Schnabel. This is Rudy, who's a young soldier. He's sometimes played by a black actor. And uh, this is uh, Friedrich, who's the insane German who falls in love with Topthorn. Uh, here we have Sergeant Thunder, who's a great character in our, in our British Army. Vet Martin, who tries to shoot Joey, much to everyone's horror. And I think this is Trooper Warren uh, when he first enlisted in the British Army. Um, and here we have the moment in which the British and the Germans make friends when they're saving Joey. So they cut him out of the wire. And this is either Manfred or this is often Taff or Geordie um, as they, uh, yeah, they make friends. It's uh, one of the favourite moments of the story and uh, represents the British and the Germans getting on in the middle of a battle, which is uh, something we all need to understand too. <laughs> um, up here, goodness me, here we go. Okay, so, um, we have uh, more Joey running, um, and we have Mum and Dad, uh, from uh, Albert's Mum and Dad, not mine and uh, a bit of Moybridge and a very moody um, sea crossing which uh, is, is, was used as um, a basic artwork for the animation of the background of the sea as the actors cross the ocean to disembark in um, France um, these are some more. These are, these are known as Emily's poppies. Um, they're not bloody, and they're often quite scratched into. And um, over here, this is an example of a kind of the landscape of the trenches. Uh, so I was trying to get a feeling of an upside-down world, of a surrealist world, and a world that was alien or almost Martian, uh, because. When you look at uh, the work of Nash, particularly, you get these amazing landscapes that hold nothing to the reality of everyday sort of Edwardian life, but give us a great insight to the soldiers' visceral experience on the front of the First World War battle landscapes. Um, what you find with these drawings is we start off with quite traditional drawing, and as we approach France, it gets moody and more charcoaly. And then as we uh, find ourselves ensconced in the First World War, in, inside the battle landscape, it gets quite cubist, expressionist, or vorticist, as we would say in Britain. This is a vorticist sky, um, which is uh, showing 
sort of shattered prisms as we look through the cloudscape here. And uh, here we have a um, very traditional drawing which um, is projected, uh, a, a long panorama which is projected um, onto the back of the scene of the, of the set, uh, which gives us our Devonshire background. Um, these are the story of the wounded, in which the raw young troops come to see uh, immediately as they get off the boat, they meet uh, a trail of uh, wounded coming back to Blighty. Um, here's some more horse this explosion, and I think that's about it. Okay.